Back in November of 2017, I did a review of the Cloudberry Lab Windows Server Backup Tool. We still have two years later clients using this, and we really like it. But Cloudberry has since changed their name to MSP360, so we'll start there. So if you're curious, there's still plenty of branding. They're co-branding right now until they switch over to their new branding. But yeah, Cloudberry's uh, got a really cool tool called their Cloudberry Backup Tool. And I'm not going to be discussing in depth the backup tool. It has changed and added features over the last couple of years. Later, I'll do a second video on maybe some details about the product. We're going to show it. But I want to talk about the MSP360 solution they're providing now. So what makes Cloudberry different, so in case you haven't watched that video, is the fact that they are just selling the backup but not dealing with the storage. They let you have the choice of the storage, which is actually really a good process here. So when you look at all the different cloud storage providers out there, and there's always more, and I always joke that it's kind of a race to uh, very low margin. So if you're trying to start one up yourself, it's very difficult to compete with companies like Wasabi Hot Cloud, who, by the way, is a new contender to market and has a different way of storing things. So they actually have a really interesting uh, way they design their storage systems, which is very affordable. Backblaze. They came out with using consumer drives. I love Backblaze. We're a Backblaze user ourselves. We really like them. Uh, of course, there's also Amazon Web Services, which is going to include the Amazon Glacier as well and their S3 compatible storage. So whether you need long-term slow storage or faster S3 storage, you know, a lot of options here. Azure, Google Cloud, DreamObjects, CenturyLink, etc., cetera, uh, Alibaba Cloud. So no matter where you want to store things, whether it's for compliance reasons, client reasons, pricing reasons, they have a pretty big list to choose from. And of course, they have some generic storage provider options like compatible S3 bucket. So you can tied to other devices or other services that act as just a standard S3 landing spot. And of course, local storage is an option when you're setting it up. So it makes them a little bit different. They're just selling you the backup software. And the backup software, if you watch my video it, from two years ago, it still has all those features. And then some, uh, they have you know full Windows, Linux, Mac support, file and folder backup, exchange backup, SQL backup, hybrid backup, et cetera, et cetera. Encryption, so it encrypts before it leaves for compliance reasons and of course security. Uh, so they have all the things you'd expect to uh, see on there. They've also added Office 365 G Suite backup and a rebranding option. I don't remember if it was there two years ago, but you can do full rebrand. I'm not gonna dive into that in this particular video. My focus today is showing you how the MSP version of it works. Essentially, one of the challenges you have a backup is you can't just set it and forget it because it may not back up. And that's always the worst case scenario. And we've run into this too many times where companies did set it and forget it. They go, oh, I bought a backup solution. Do you ever test it? Do you ever do a consistency check? Do you make sure it actually ran or it's not just, you know, doing some blanks? There was a company locally that went out of business a few years back and that was what happened. Their backup was running for years. They thought uh, someone had checked a box to do like a demo test on the backup. So it actually produced the email, but wasn't actually back up the files. And they were an engineering firm and they lost everything. They were 100% digital and they lost all their data, all their engineering data, and they actually didn't survive that. So um, we tried helping them, but there was nothing that the, it was damaged beyond belief when it came to the array. There was no saving the array, no amount of data recovery solution would solve it. Uh, that's why it's so important to have backups and test them. Untested backups are just wishful thinking. All right, let's dive into the product here. So I have a separate account set up with the backups for my YouTube demo. So you'll see YouTube demo at lawrencesystems.com. So you're, in case you're wondering, um, there's not much in here yet because I didn't want to expose all my clients here. So I, I figured walking through a deployment and showing how the dashboard looks is a good way to do this. Now their dashboard is interesting. It has so many controls, it took me a little bit to learn. So I, one thing about their product, I like it because it gives you so much control, but it's also jumping right into it can be a little bit of a challenge because there's a lot of options you can set. They give you really detailed options, especially because they offer like a rebranding, reselling options. You can create each company in here. And then for each company, you can create a series of users for that company. And those users can be even particularly to a username. So every computer can have its own individual backup plan customized to that particular workstation, not just to a company. Um, so it's a little daunting at first, but not that hard once you go through it. So I figured walking through a deployment and setting up, well, we already set up a new company. So we'll go over here and we'll go to companies. 
and I have this YouTube test company. Matter of fact, when I create the YouTube user, it can't see any of the other companies we have set up. It only sees this YouTube test company that we are setting up and doing a bunch of uh, goofing around with essentially. And of course, this YouTube video. So if you log in as one of the other administrators, uh, you can see all the different companies on there. So I like this uh, granular control. So if you were doing some of the stuff that we're getting into more co-managed IT, we can actually create a user so they can administer their backups and be able to uh, make changes to the system on that granular level without seeing the other companies. So it's, it's pretty cool that they have all these features. Storage accounts. We have the B2 Cloudberry demo bucket. So when you're setting up the storage accounts in here, um, like I said, you can add all kinds of different storage accounts. These are the ones listed, a file system one. So yes, you can even build the local file system accounts, including putting the path in the data share. So if you have some local storage or a local NAS server, maybe that we're saving all their data on um, for the backup. So they have a local copy for all the different machines backing up to that. You can predefine that file system in here if you want to. We have our uh, LTS free NAS because we're demoing this at our office. Uh, in it's up to you how you want to design the backups themselves, but you can create a bucket per company or you can put a bunch of different companies in one bucket. It creates different subfolders for each one of the computers you're backing up. So as long as your naming schema uh, makes sense, you can do it that way. Creating a bucket per company is actually arbitrarily easy and that's the way we've gone with it. Uh, it seems to be pretty simple to do. That way that bucket is only ever tied to that company. It seems like the best way to keep all the things separated out into their categories. Plus, when you're looking at it at a per bucket basis, and this is important, you can go here, edit display name, storage cost settings. You can decide what you want to charge per gigabyte so you can get these. So you can add a custom price by company, add a custom price by user, and or just say this bucket costs this much to store in. That way you can calculate your storage based on that. So if you have a client tied to a bucket, you go, okay, I've got 20 terabytes of data. This is how much it costs to have that much data in for that client. So like I said, offering these controls means it's a little bit to set up. You're not just a set it and forget it. It just doesn't go into some big pool, but it is obviously a uh, concern that you want to make sure you're charging your clients appropriately because, well, one size doesn't fit all, which is what led us to this whole Cloudberry scenario. We just have some clients that have a ton of storage and Cloudberry allows us to pick the storage that works for that client and charge them appropriately based on that. And we can build all that in here. Uh, if you looked at the home screen right here, it does have fancy reports. Um, we can see all the backup management and storage reports. There's not much in here because it's our demo account, but their reporting is pretty slick. I think we can look at the uh, scheduled reports. You can build ones out, user plan reports, billing reports, backup history reports. They put it all on here. They can send you notices, uh, consistent checks when they were done, the red axes, we were goofing with things and a consistency check plan failed. Yeah, we purposely made it fail. Dig into the details for this particular system. So they have fine granular reporting um, across all of them. So I, this was pretty cool. And this is our BackBerry. Well, actually, we deleted some of this. I think this one's still running, though. Yeah, this one is. Uh, it's backing up a gaming server. So you'll see that pop up in there. License usage. This is kind of neat, too, when you set these up. Uh, we have all the YouTube ones set to trial. You get, uh, what does it look like here? There's seven days left. So when you get a new license, you have so many days to try it. So when you're setting up the licenses, it's not like you have to buy them right away. That way, if you're trying to sort something out, you can back something up, move it around. Also, when you remove a user, because the whatever user you create, and we'll get to that in a second, the license ties to it. If you go, this person cancels, the backup licenses get released back into the pool. So you buy the licenses and they just release back to add them again to another user. So if you change things around later, no problem. The, the pool can go back and forth on the license uh, in history of that, which is actually kind of cool. Now, I'm not going to dive into the licensing costs on here. And the reason why is because it dates the video. So if you're watching this video six months from now and they've changed the price, maybe they lowered it, maybe they raised it, I don't know. But you'll complain about the accuracy of said licenses on there. Therefore, uh, it's not relevant to this particular talk because it dates videos putting license fees in here in case they change things. Monitoring history, here's the different computers and some of the things in here. Here's those more detailed so you can look at each desktop that was in here or this Barry backup test uh, system that was in there, the free NAS image backup, file backup, consistency, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see all those. Uh, it does have, and we'll get into how this works in a second here, a 
remote management. So you can see if these are on lines, when the uh, when licenses expire for some of these. And if you want to remove a system, you can actually remove it from here. So even if you lose access to the computer or the computer dies, uh, this also, you can uninstall it from here or you can, when it's online, you can go back and forth and remove these computers. You can choose whether or not you want to keep the storage room with the computer, et cetera. Um, you know, all those features are there. So let's go ahead and create a new user for this YouTube demo company. So I'm going to create user. We'll call him Tom. Oh, there's only one of them in my name. Uh, YouTube. TomTube. It generates a password. Who do you want to send the emails to? Uh, YouTube. Doesn't have to be in the domain, by the way. Uh, demo at. So this is where all the notices are going to go to YouTube demo at LearnSystems.com. Don't email that address. I'll probably just delete it. So uh, it'll go to the bit bucket in the sky. Um, and we don't bounce emails. We throw them into a bit bucket because bouncing them is kind of a waste. But uh, there's the password it said. We could type something else in there. So I'll just uh, save that over here in my little, like, little notes file. And then Tom Tube. All right. We'll paste that in in a second. User enabled. Send email with instructions. We don't really care. We don't need to do that. Save. Now, that didn't assign a license yet. You'll see when we assign the license. So here's Tom Tube. Now, if you notice, we have downloads. And we can just download the application here. It was also on the home page. Uh, you can... It says get more because I have not created any custom ones. And by the way, this download link stays static, so you're actually able to copy and paste it so you can uh, pull it over, uh, so to speak, into any machine from the command line. It creates a uh, S3 bucket to download this. And it's tied to your, excuse me, it's tied to your account. So it automatically knows to talk to the account when you uh, do that. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to our Windows box. I'll try, I didn't bore you with loading the program. Uh, it's arbitrarily easy to load. Next yes, next yes, it comes up here. Tom Tube was the name, and we'll uh, paste that in. This is where we get to choose the product edition. If it was a file only backup, they have discounts for the file only backup uh, versus the desktop server versus just a Microsoft SQL versus these. And like I said, when you go on the ultimate, uh, it's all the licenses rolled in once. So you choose what you're going to use. Desktop server is probably what you're going to choose for a lot of them is in short, it's going to do full system image of the uh, server, full system image of the um, server or desktop, whichever one you're choosing. And that's a lot of times what you want because you're going to create one image of the system so you can do bare metal restores and then incrementally just back up the documents that change. And you can set schedules for each of those as we'll show here. So I hit OK. Created the license. Now we just need to come up with a backup plan. So we're going to do an image-based backup. Local or cloud backup. Hey, look. Cloudberry demo online backup account. That is the uh, backup account we had for, that goes to B2, already set up. So because we set that up in here already, it says, hey, this was tied to your account. So therefore, uh, it will automatically pull that information. Now, it would take a long time to do a backup to that uh, image base. So we're just not going to. We're going to uh, cancel and just do a file backup because that would be better for time's sake to show it working. File backup. I can assure you the image backups work. We've tested them and we've restored them, et cetera. Um, in the image backup does just like it says as an entire backup. Now, one side note, when you're doing a image backup, uh, it will take a while. Of course, it's doing a full image, but it's also can do incrementals after that, but it's not granular as in files. Uh, it's not as easy to extract a single file up. That's why you want two backup plans, one for file backup, one for full image of the system. Just keeping that out there. And you can determine like different timings for each plan. Maybe you don't need a full image every single night, even though it's only incremental. Maybe you only want to do an image backup once a week to save on, you know, there's not a lot of changes unless you're loading software that come on the computer uh, each time. But you can uh, pretty much assured that file backups are a real thing where people are constantly changing files on their computer and you may want daily, hourly, et cetera, for things like that. Save backup plan for configuration to the backup storage. Sure. Uh, backup permissions, why not? Track local file uh, deletions, sure. In 
you can go through and do more details in here. Like I said, it's super granular and what it offers. And we're going to go over here. And we got users. Uh, which one's got some files in it? Oh, this one does. So let's see. Get rid of, say, documents and downloads. Let's back those two up so we have something to back up. Back up all selected files. Back up these file types. You can get real granular. Uh, backup files only modified within days. Modified since. You can go through, uh, do not back up hidden system, do not back up locked files uh, exclusively open by other applications or larger than this. So you can really customize the parameter. We're going to go for all. Sure, compressing them makes sense to me. This is important. You have to set a password. Well, you don't have to. I mean, only if you care about the encryption and security. And, uh, whoops, I don't know what I typed. Uh, all right. So we put a password in and you have to remember this password if you ever want to restore the files. It is encrypting it before it's leaving. This is for compliance reasons. Therefore, anything, if someone were to compromise a bucket, they would not have any of the information. So enabling encryption, very important, but also don't lose the password because <laughs> that's very important too. Um, and don't save it to the desktop of the computer that you're trying to restore because that's happened where people couldn't call me because they couldn't restore something because they saved the complicated password to a note file on a desktop and then you can't even restore that desktop which by the way for bare metal restorers it does say make bootable usb or iso images uh, it says usb but if you there's also an option for an iso image and it will create the boot system that will allow you to do it but the password once again is not saved so whatever password you have you do have to type back in when you're doing a restore uh, that's important it's for, for security they do think a lot about security over at cloudberry Retention policies, purge, delete files that haven't been deleted locally. This is a, so you can create certain amounts of immutable files. That way, even if they're deleted from here, they're not necessarily deleted in the cloud. Uh, run schedule manually. That's fine. We're going to do that. Oh, I'll mention this. Pre-backup, post-backup, uh, backup chain. You can set certain options. And for example, if you wanted the uh, system to run an application before or after the backups, absolutely can be done uh, and control right there. So we kicked it off. It's running a backup. It's, I don't even know how many files are in there, but it's going to back them up to the Cloudberry system. And you get the idea it's backing up. Of course, what we hear about when you have many, many clients backing up is what does this look like on a dashboard? And how is this look? So actually let's go to remote management. So let's see. Oh, this one's online, CPU memory. Uh, connect to remote computer, which by the way, they have a report tool. That's what this does. It wants to know if you want to download their backup support pack. That's something Cloudberry is offering. I'm not going to, I'll explore that another time. I, wanted to, I haven't really looked into it much. Uh, we have our other remote tools that we're using right now. Edit account, edit license, edit local file system. Uh, here's all the options on there. So it's in trial. It doesn't have any, uh, no extra ones available. So I can't like assign one of those, like I said, where they get pushed back. So this is going to be on November 8th. So it looks like you got two weeks of a license on there. So desktop server trial, please select a date. I could buy it then. So it's doing the backup. There's the file backup that it's running right now. We'll let it go ahead and complete. Uh, memory usage, storage, etc. So I can see this on here. When it comes to reporting, Editing with myself up a little bit, but yeah, now you can see the reporting is done. Here's this new computer. First time it ran, click for details. Here's the details. It was successful run at 8.31 a.m. on today's date. Detailed report if you need to know what files are backed up. It, it gets granular, so all the features you expect to back up. So you can, from this dashboard, drill into without going to the local machine and get the information you're looking for. Detailed back up the files. Apparently I had some XCPNG stuff on there. Shocker, right? Um, and then if that's not good enough, export to CSV. I like that they have that just right there at the top. That shows up in a couple different places uh, when you're running these reports. And the advantage, of course, like especially with a user report for a particular company, a storage report, when you want to be able to just jump right in there and go, all right, I need these reports so I can uh, start auditing things. And some of, you know, when you have a lot of clients on backup, this scales quite a bit uh, to have that. Having the audit log for um, everything as well is important. This, I'm not going to show, well, I, I could show it, but I got to blur out all the IP addresses here. Um, it granularly has all the audit history. So uh, we logged in. 
We in the settings, create new, change credentials, uh, user new, remote deploy, new configuration, remove configuration. I was prepping it for the YouTube video and deleting some of the test stuff that I had in there uh, just to clean it up a little bit. So it even is giving you the details. I'm just blurring out the IP address here. But yeah, it's the good audit logs of ever, all the information in here. Um, and once again, it's searchable. This is the last day. We can go back further if we need to for some of the things that I was doing. So definitely pretty uh, nice the way they have all those things built in here. Now, what about the backup plans and things like that? Well, this is where things kind of get interesting. So uh, we can take and upload the plan to the cloud. So we're going to do that now. There's a couple different ways to do it. So we're going to go here to the tools. And the concept is, let's say you have, uh, and this is a perfect example. We actually have a client with, I think, 16 of the same, roughly, well, same in terms of plan, uh, servers that all need the same plan. They need a local storage. Uh, they need these settings, et cetera. So what we want to do is export the configuration. So you go through the settings. You get a system configured um, how you want. Then you go to export configuration this file backup, like we called it, kind of a boring name, I know. And we'll save it to the desktop here. Uh, and actually, we'll call it uh, YouTube. Uh, I guess about too bright. I probably don't have to. You guys would forgive me, right? YouTube demo 2019. Save. We'll save it to the desktop. And we'll hit export. Um, it will keep the encryption password. So if we set that password, it can use that password again. It just doesn't allow us to see the password, um, probably hashed. So configuration successfully exported right there. Now I'm not logged into Cloudberry, so I'm going to copy it over to this share. I'm not logged into it on this Windows VM that I'm demoing this on. I'm only logged into my computer, but I have access to that share. So I'm going to copy that file over. And we're going to upload it from right here. This is, this is the Cloud De Backup demo folder that I had saved. And we're going to go ahead and hit open. And we're going to you tube demo upload. So what this allows you to do, now we can add a rule. We first we have this in there. We can edit and we can see what it's doing. Backup test plan, uh, settings for it what it's doing, all those little details, especially, like I said, you can get fairly granular on all the details, uh, how you want things to go. It goes here. These are the folders it's backing up specifically. And then you can customize it if you need to. But then from here, add the rule. We're going to apply this. We're going to apply it to this company, to these users, or this computer if you wanted to. And obviously, maybe you want to leave some of these blank because you want to install it to all users. Let's say you create a user for a company, and that user is called the server backup. And then that server backup, they have three of the same servers. Well, now you can deploy, you configure it on one server and deploy it to three. Or like our client that has almost 20 servers that are pretty much very similar to each other in a way that we need to back them up. They all have different functions. But then you will deploy it to all those next servers. So you can keep pulling that configuration and pushing it towards all those on there or only to new installations if uh, when you're setting up new ones with this particular user so it automatically gets this setting this also applies which we didn't do but if there was a local backup we had configured as well so whatever the configurations you want to export from this particular workstation you create the rule you name the configuration rule and then you say these computers at this particular company all get this rule it's kind of a neat way to do it because then you don't have to try to define especially if there's like really specific retention policies and things like that for each one of these servers you're backing up, um, you can predefine them in a rule. Or you could predefine the rule and then deploy it to any customer you want. So it kind of goes back and forth. But this is a neat way to do this because of all the options they have. And you take time setting it, you know, building out those retention policies for clients to go, I need this many days. Uh, as a matter of fact, maybe you have multiple plans because one of the important things is creating what they refer to as immutable backups. And maybe you say every uh, so many days we keep them over on this particular server and we send them to an immutable bucket. And what immutable bucket means is you set up something on a cloud that you can add to but never delete from. That way you can have incredibly long retention policies on things. I think that's kind of a neat way to do it. Uh, the fact that you can build these all out of separate plans. All right, so we talked about backup plans. What about restore plans? Let's talk about those real quick. So you go here to restore, next, 
We'll just choose the account in here. Run restore, restore folders, latest version sounds reasonable to me. Maybe we want to restore everything, why not? We'll just choose all the files. You can get granular on restore. You can find that one version you want. Uh, point in time, you know, revision backups, modification period, backup time, manually select individual uh, pieces of information. Very granular, just like the backups are. So you can do everything. Uh, restore original location or different location. Hey, why not? I made a test folder on the desktop, so we'll save it to user Tom desktop there. Override existing, only if newer. Like I said, restoring permissions if you need to. Uh, those are in there. Restore files that were deleted. That can be interesting. So restore files that were deleted from source machine prior to this restore date. Those, like I said, it's got options on there uh, for granular. There, decrypt the following. If you don't decrypt it, if I'm not mistaken, it drops them all back encrypted on there. Uh, so I definitely recommend, once again, even though we have it, even though we have it saved over on here, it's not saved here. So this is that it's decrypted um, on the local workstation. So we'll put that password in we used. I think I used the right password. That should work. Uh, notifications, not a problem. Next, next, next. All right, so we have it all set up and we have a restore plan created right here. And it's running and it's going to drop all those files back over on the desktop. Now, once again, we're going to go over here. Remote management should by now, it's pretty quick. Uh, there we go. We'll click on this. Hey, look, it's restore plans running. It sees it right away. There seems to be roughly about 30 to 40 seconds for the time you create something or even less uh, before it shows up on here. And also, like here, we just ran the restore plan. If we wanted to run the backup plan again, uh, we can run it from here. This allows you to run each of the plans, each ones that you see on there. Um, they can be run from here. You can see all the stats and everything, how it's running. So if you need to force a backup or force a restore, if you have a plan in place for that restore, that can be done here. Now I showed a file upload, uh, for example. So with a file upload of that configuration file that we put in here so we could create it, there's another way to do it. And if we go here, we can remote deploy, but we want to import the configuration from this machine. Do you really want to import the configuration? We sure do. Configuration has been successfully created. So now we go over to remote deploy. And there it is. Here's the configuration for this. So just like how we did this one and upload the file, they actually allow you to grab and import the config. And then the same rules go back to applying it back down. So it's kind of a neat way you can do that. So you can create these um, configurations. And instead of doing that little file upload, they just have two different ways to do it. I don't know if there's an advantage to one or the other. Uh, the support team, when I was going through the demo of this, showed me how to do it with the file one. But I noticed they had the feature in there. Maybe it was a new feature they added. I will note when you're creating new configurations, you can add a restore plan or file backup plan, but the image plans uh, you want, they said you want to import them either from the file or probably this import option there. But that's important that if you're trying to create a from scratch generic plan, uh, whether it's a backup restore, the image option doesn't show up inside of here. Uh, not to mention, you have to choose whether it's a Mac or Linux config because uh, they do have different configuration options. I don't have a Mac to test it on, but I know the options, they're granular still, but the way they do the configs are a little different because the way Linux and uh, Windows and Mac all address hard drives, well, Linux and Mac do it the same way. They don't use drive letter names. Windows does. Therefore, I'm assuming that's why they have different types of configuration. So if you said, hey, back up the documents folder on Linux, you mean the home drive and it, you mean slash home slash username versus backslash drive letter backslash users, et cetera. So I'm assuming that's why there's two different ones here. Now we're going to be back over to reporting. And this is something I like. Uh, I played with one of them real quick. Uh, so a little gap was in the video because uh, I made a mistake when I was talking about something I said. So I had to delete it and I restarted the restore plan. Uh, but it's funny because this is the telltale sign. Sometimes I make YouTube videos, this happens. Um, this is the one we just created in a video. This is one I created, but then deleted. It keeps track, even though I deleted the restore plan test that I had done first and said, oh, I said this completely wrong and rewound and did that part of the video over. It does have in the reporting, the restore plans I did. So this is the one we just did here. And this is the one I did a few minutes before then I click details and 
away we go. Matter of fact, I ran it, then I ran it again, and I forgot to turn on the fact that um, it did that. So this is actually kind of cool. As long as that computer is still in here, even though I deleted the plan um, because I made a mistake, the history stays there. So here's the restore plan test that actually doesn't exist anymore. Here's the restore plan that we created that does. And you can see the history. So it's actually, even though it says backup reporting, it's actually also reporting on any restores that may have happened. So this is kind of neat because if you're ever looking back at clients and maybe you can look at the history of their restores, we have those clients and we all have them that test the backups for you all the time because they oops a file every Monday. <laughs> and um, you can then kind of track a history of it. And I thought that was kind of cool. I, I do like this dashboard. Um, it is a little big because it's going to show all the different things that are running, but you know, it, it's still pretty cool because uh, you can get that. Plus, you can just drill down because of the filters here. Uh, you know, we're only going to show the one YouTube company in here. Uh, we only want to see issues only. That's usually where you want to start. So when you're showing the things, you want to focus down on that. And of course, it lets you go back through the month so you can see if there's a pattern of failures or a pattern of uh, restores and maybe even track a pattern of behavior when people uh, have problems with forgetting files. You're like, you know, they always seem to forget it on X, X date. And back to our export to CSV options. So you have that option at the top there. Now, the last couple of things I'll cover is yes, there's integrations to ConnectWise, Manage, Automate, Autotask, OptiTune. Um, for those of you that follow my channel, yes, we're still using as of right now in October 2019, SolarWinds RMM. And because SolarWinds has a competing product, I doubt there will be an integration, but I'm not overly worried about it. That is just something I will leave as a side note. They have all kinds of other email customization, license usage reports. I think I covered all of the things that I can think of in here. Audit logs, uh, storage, storage limit, storage accounts. Here's how you set up your own profile. Yes, it has 2FA. I don't know if I mentioned it at the beginning. It will bug you about it if you don't turn it on. I just, because this user is going to be deleted, I didn't turn it on for this particular user. Because uh, once this YouTube demo is over and this video is uploaded, I will go ahead and delete this. Here's like all the different uh, storage information and things like that. Um, and I will do some future reporting on how this works because they have very reasonable pricing on their, uh, how they do the G Suite in an Office 365 backups to domain. And this is becoming for compliance reasons and for, well, sometimes reason when people lose control of their email or delete things, maybe you want to set these up so it uh, does entire backups of those accounts on the regular. And once again, because you can store them in an encrypted bucket of your choosing, it's pretty pretty great way to handle things in terms of uh, being able to hold all those emails because there's, man, there's a lot of them. But I'm going to do some future videos in X. I haven't really dove into testing it. That's a future video and a future solution uh, we're going to dig into. Same with the rebranding. I may or may not play with it. It's kind of a neat feature they have in there. Uh, currently, we don't worry about the branding as much because it, it, we're not really reselling it. We're reselling it to our clients that don't mind. They, they never look at the software anyways that it says Cloud Barrier MSP360 or our name Lawrence Systems. Uh, but I think it's pretty cool that they do have that as an option. So there is that. And the last thing I'll cover here is going to be the licenses uh, when they have the license fees. And like I said, discussing license fees, dates of video, but the license fees are recurring uh, annual. So when you choose one, there's annual recurring for that particular machine. And they're very, very reasonable um, right now with their license fees. So uh, contact your sales rep for the details. Uh, like I said, it's just it's mostly not to date the video. They don't they don't hide the license fees from you. It's just so the video doesn't get dated and someone point out that this video from October of 2019 varies from the license price they got in March of 2020 when they're looking at it. But they do recur annually for any of the licenses on there. So uh, makes it pretty simple and you get volume discounts. And volume discounts um, right now are also pretty steep. So as you add more systems in there to give you discounts on those annual license fees. Uh, so just keep note of that. That's something in there. Uh, that's it for the Cloudberry Backup. Uh, check it out. I do have a no special offer. I did work with them, though. They have a tracking link. They're curious of how many of you come from this video. Uh, so the link just identifies that you watch this video. It's not an affiliate link. It's not a uh, – there's no partnership or affiliation I have with the folks over at MSP3. MSP 360. Other than that, I am uh, going to be at the IT Nation event, uh, which that's dating this to, that's happening in 2019. Uh, they're taking me down there, but our, my 
relationship, so to speak, with them. And the developers I've talked to there are uh, because they did a review of the product and I've talked to them about ideas and suggestions and they're uh, pretty awesome people, been cool to work with. And I, I love seeing this product come along and we've seen it come to the point now where like, okay, we're starting to switch to it because we really like it. Uh, so it's once again, a product that I'm using. So I have no affiliate or offer uh, code, uh, but the link down below that thinks their website is just a tracking to see how many people, they're curious about statistics as we all are. You don't have to click it. You can not tell them you watched this video that you're just interested in product if you want. I'm not going to be brokenhearted because there's no commission on it for me. It's just some stats that they're curious about. All right, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.